I'm Lenny Nelson, co-founder of Exo Mountain Gear. I want to go over everything that I put in my pack for uh, elk bivy hunt uh, in September. So, of course, starting off, um, I use the Exo 3500 pretty much exclusively. Um, for me, I can get about five, six days in this solo, and then more if I, if I go with a partner. Um, for my water, I use a Camelback. Three liter for us is very important. A lot of times we won't have water for a day or two, so three liters is huge for us. Um, we have that with a quick connect. What's great about that is, is that connects right into your uh, uh, Sawyer water filter, which is what we use. And then normally I have two one liter platypuses. Put these right on, squeeze it, fill it up. And the reason I have two of those is because I'll use this to fill it, and I'll put one on each side of my pack, and that keeps it really balanced. And then when I get to the top of the mountain, I've got five liters, you know, which will last me probably a day and a half and before I got to go back for water. For my sleep system, I use a Moonstone 20 degree bag. It's about a three pound bag, so not the lightest in the world. Um, it's down. It's actually about 12 years old. So if there's one thing I can say about sleeping bags is spend the money up front if you can. It's an awesome investment. And by the time you amortize it out over 10, 12 years, it's well worth it. Um, I use a R4 Sea uh, to Summit sleeping pad. It's, uh, I think it's about two and a half, three inches. So it's a little bit more comfy, a little bit warmer. I sleep a little bit on the cold side. Um, and this 20 degree bag can probably get me all the way into November. Once it gets below in the 15s consistently, I'll probably just throw a liner in it and that'll get me through the rest of the season. I'm, I'm actually a big fan of what used to be Golite. You know, they're no longer in business, um, but this is their, their three-man teepee and I use it without a floor or without what they call the, the bug nest. So basically I use this and you can fit two to three people in it. So when you're elk hunting, you usually have a partner and what I'll do is that kind of lightens up the load for everybody by using this. And what's nice about it is it's big enough where you can sit up in it, especially if you get some bad weather and uh, just makes it really comfortable for lightweight. What's great about this is, is when I'm using my, I have my tripod, I have my, my slick tripod here, I drop one of the legs off, off of it and then I use it for my center pole so I'm saving e even more weight there. Um, I did upgrade, you know it's funny, it's the small things over the years that you learn. Um, upgraded to these Hildeberg tent stakes. There's nothing worse than being in a stake in a rocky you know, peak. So these are a little bit more money, but they're, super, they're, they're definitely well worth it. When it comes to food, I like to have each day in kind of a, a big Ziploc bag. Because um, I definitely probably pack a little bit on the heavy side for food. I definitely like to eat. It seems like I have this fear of running out of food when I'm in the back country. So this keeps me from eating everything on the first couple of days. Um, and, and for me, I'm probably a little bit different. I, I, like, I like protein, I think, when I'm in the mountain more than a lot of guys. Some guys can eat, uh, you know, Jason, he can have crackers all day and be fine. Me, I seem like I need a little protein, so I'll throw in some cheese, some salami, some jerky, um, you know, and then I'll even have, you know, some ramen noodles at lunch. Then I'm definitely a big mountain house fan in the evenings. For my fork, I use a spork. Uh, this is just from REI, I think it's like 250 plastic, unbreakable, that's, you know, best money spent. I've been using Jetboil for several years now, I think when they first came out I had the bigger, heavier aluminum version, um, upgraded to the titanium one, which unfortunately they don't make anymore, but um, I absolutely love this for the weight and the convenient factor and the efficiency of it is, is just amazing, in my opinion, can't be beat. As far as some of my accessories, obviously, you know, I take toilet paper. Um, for my fire starter, I'm a huge fan of um, cotton balls with Vaseline. They burn really, really long, um, especially in, in wet, um, wet conditions and kind of get everything dried up and get, and get started. Uh, obviously my wind checker. And in September, it can be really hot, especially in the high country when, it's, when you're way up there, the sun is really intense. So I use uh, some sunscreen on my ears and my neck. Over the years, I became a fan of uh, putting, using a camo stick on my face and my hands. Um, I really believe that, you know, as you're drawn, that movement, um, I've had it too many times where I went to draw, I didn't have my hands covered, my face, and something jumped, so I do use that. Um, of course, a watch, to, you know, you can coordinate with your buddies on when you're going to meet up. Chapstick, uh, toothbrush, lighter. Um, in here, I've had this forever. Um, and I have my Tylenol PM in there. I'll throw in maybe some allergy medicine and then also just some regular Advil to, to get you through the night and the days. And then I do bring a, an Allen wrench. That's both for my bow if I have any issues. And then also that helps me take off uh, my leg on my slick tripod for the tent. Here I, I have my kill kit. I keep this in, in my stash pocket. What's great about that is I just leave it in my, in my XO until I need it and I tear out the whole thing and kind of keeps it organized. So in here I use, um, I usually pack like two Alaska game bags that usually get me all the way through and out to the truck until I need to get some more. And then I use uh, the Outdoors Edge knife. Um, 
Before, I was using the Havilon. Uh, I switched over to this because I really like how durable it is. You can really put pressure on something and it's not going to snap. It's probably not quite as sharp, but for me, that trade-off is definitely worth it. And then, of course, I'll, I'll pack a few extra blades. Um, normally, for an elk or a deer, if you're, you can normally get through with, with one blade. For my headlamp, uh, I upgraded this year. This is a Black Diamond. This is a rechargeable version. Um, frankly, I thought it was going to be a great idea. It's going to be full power every time I went out, but the rechargeable batteries in it are just awful. So I just replaced those with regular batteries, and, and now it's, um, it works just like any of the other ones. For um, my bugle, um, this is Elk Nux Bugle. I like it. It's a little bit smaller. I'm not a fan of the real big ones, um, just because they, they kind of get in the way with me. Um, and then as far as reeds go. I'm a huge fan of the mellow yellow. I use this for both cow calling and um, elk calling and then I, I do switch it kind of back and forth between uh, the brown one. I think this is the call the, the challenger of bugle and bull game calls. And then the other thing I do is, is I, I like to rotate through my reeds a lot. It seems like if I use them a lot over the day they'll kind of get stretched out a little bit and I'll just kind of keep rotating through them and sometimes it seems like I think my mouth gets used to one and then it's almost like I just don't know how to use it for a little while, so I'll switch it up, then you know you kind of get that change up. I do use trekking poles, pretty much these just stay in the back of my pack until I kill something and then once I load up they come off and really it's just to save your knees uh, coming out, uh, you know, from getting injured or wearing them out frankly. On my optics, um, I use a Slick 634 tripod, it's carbon fiber, it's uh, fairly lightweight, um, more than anything, I'm pretty hard, hard on my gear, it's bomb proof, I mean I've used it for trekking poles, I use it for my tent pole, I mean I just beat the heck out of it and it, and it just works really, really well. Um, I do use a Manfrotto head on here, um, this is great for filming and also for running a tripod, it's a little bit on the heavy side but it has some really nice, uh, it's a fluid head, it has some really nice movement. I personally like a little bit smaller bino, so I don't like a real big bino, just because the weight and, and getting in my way. So I like the, these are the Vortex uh, 10 by 42 razors. Um, I've really, I mean, I beat the heck out of them and they still work awesome. Huge fan of these. Um, and on them, it does have the this, this attachment here. Uh, this is by, I think, Field uh, Optics Research. It's a little attachment that allows you to attach your binos to your tripod. Very simple. You just put this little piece on here. And what's great about that is it's like once you put it on your on your tripod, it almost takes your binos from like a 10 power to a 20 power because they're perfectly still. And you can just look into the brush, look into the timber, and the amount of eye strain you have compared to uh, looking through a um, uh, spotting scope is way, way less. And as far as spotting scopes go, for elk hunting, you know, it's not that important to look through a spotting scope that much. Um, but it is nice to have one, so I do pack a Nikon ED50, I think this is just over a pound, so the weight penalty is, isn't much, and for the weight, the size, and the price, this ED50, Nikon ED50 is hard to beat. I use the uh, Leopold RX1000 um, for everything. What I like about it is, is kind of push one button, and you see one number, and that's what you shoot for with a bow. You're not clicking through it, it's really simple, and I also like the red optics inside of these. For my camera, uh, since last year I've been running an RX 103. Um, basically for amateurs, I think this is an awesome camera. It kind of does most of it for you and you can get some super high quality pictures and some really high quality um, video um, without having to try to be a professional. All right, for my clothing, um, I'm actually a big ASAT camo fan. Um, there's been more times than not since I've been wearing ASAT that seems like I've gotten away with something that I shouldn't have. Uh, I'm not sure how it works or why it works, but my experience, um, I've had very good luck with it out, out west here. Um, and then First Light, um, I really like their gear. First of all, this puffy jacket, it's, it's in my pack no matter where I go, no matter what the weather. It's awesome. Cold, warm, in between, it just seems to fit everything. You can hike with it, whatever. Um, and then obviously, I'm a big wool fan as well for the stink um, and just because when it gets wet, it's still warm. So I, I do have, I usually have a pair of long johns. Um, I, I like a tight fitting pair of uh, underwear just for the comfort and then the wool for the smell. And then I do use um, First Light's nylon guide pants. These are uh, definitely very durable um, and they got a nice stretch to them. So I really like those as well. I do normally always pack a beanie and this is probably more I, I wear it at night because um, I kind of sleep cold and this helps you know, tremendously at night. 
I use uh, the Lano and the Chama from First Light. Both of those are merino wool. I'm a huge fan of those. What's great about them is, is you, you know, between that combination and the Puffy, you can go from 20 degrees to 80 degrees and uh, be super comfortable. With my shoes, um, I'm a huge Solomon fan as well. Um, th these are super lightweight. They're comfortable out of the box. They have the right, it's always a real balance of, you know, a really stiff boot. In my opinion, I'm not a huge fan of it, but then you get a boot that's really uh, n not stiff enough in the bottom and your feet get fatigued. And to me, Solomon just hits that middle just perfect. Um, and I do use a Lathrop & Sons uh, insert that just kind of softens up the sole a little bit. So like on those days, those really, really long miles, that just kind of helps my feet feel a little bit better. And as far as uh, socks go, again, I use a wool sock, just kind of a medium weight. I don't like a super heavy weight because over the day, it seems like my feet will kind of get sloppy in there. And then I just use a kind of a standard uh, wool uh, gloves. All right, we got everything in the pack. Let's see how much it weighs. Twenty-two and a half.